The fate of the legendary lost city of Atlantis has occupied thinkers, researchers, and all kinds of people for hundreds of years. Was there really a highly developed island kingdom that simply went underwater at some point and of which no traces can be found today? Or was Atlantis just another name for one of the many high civilizations that have perished over time and that are known to us today by completely different names? There are many theories as to the fate of Atlantis, and while some of them can easily and quickly be relegated to the realms of myth and legend, others have persisted through the centuries. But how far along is the research now? And what about the rumors that the empire might be in the perpetual ice of the Arctic? These are the questions we'll be exploring today. The Legend of Atlantis. We owe the original stories about Atlantis to the Greek philosopher Plato. He reports as early as 350 BC on a legendary empire that, at that time, brought a large part of Europe and Africa under control. The problem is that not only was Plato very vague, but also his stories were often more theoretical in nature. According to Plato, who said he got the story from Critias, who got it from his grandfather, who got it from Solon, who heard it from the Egyptians, there was a mighty imperial island that ruled over various other islands and parts of Africa and Europe. Supposedly, Atlantis was arranged in concentric rings that alternated between water and land. Plato also describes it as a paradise with rich soil, advanced engineering, extravagant architecture, and superior harbors. Atlantis was ruled by kings and a civil administration, and had an organized military. Problems began for Atlantis when the island nation waged war on parts of Asia and Europe that were already under their control. The city-state of Athens held fast against the superior Atlantis army and ultimately managed to defeat them. And that's when things got really bad for Atlantis. After the battle, it is said that violent earthquakes and floods began, which sent Atlantis to the bottom of the sea. In Plato's account, this highly advanced empire incredibly fell within one day and one night after the Athenian attack in 9600 BC. The fall of Atlantis is attributed to the wrath of the gods. The possible location, or even the very existence, of Atlantis has often been debated by great thinkers over the centuries, and there are treatises on the matter from almost every era. Especially in the Renaissance, the legend was rediscovered, and many people started looking for or developed their own theories as to where exactly Atlantis could have been located. These speculations are based on what we know of Atlantis from Plato, namely, that the land was said to be rich in raw materials, with incredibly knowledgeable and well-developed citizens who were also outrageously rich. Given that Atlantis's empire was supposed to spread over Africa, Asia, and Europe, it was believed that the island was located in the Atlantic. With this basic information, there have been many different approaches to find the lost city. And so, it is no wonder that the discussions about the location continue to the present day. Santorini and the Legend of Atlantis For those who believe in the historical existence of Atlantis, Santorini has always been an important starting point. Many of the researchers believe that the fate of the mysterious empire and that of the Greek island must be closely linked. The basis of this connection is a huge catastrophe that has been proven to have happened in 1613 BC. There were probably several strong volcanic eruptions in connection with a subsequent tsunami. According to current knowledge, this was probably the end of the Minoan culture, a high civilization of the Greek islands, which ended within a few months after the accident. The concrete connection with Santorini results from the fact that the island and its neighboring islands probably once formed a large area of land. Excavations on and below the island have also revealed various ancient cities and ruins. The ruins of Akrotiri still stand to this day. What remains indicates a civilization of high development and passionate craftsmanship, which is something that has also been said about Atlantis. In fact, it's one of the most realistic interpretations of Plato's story about Atlantis and therefore attracts not only many tourists, but also a large number of Atlantis researchers every year who see the starting point of the legend in this locale. Somewhere near the Strait of Gibraltar. Another theory that has gained recent popularity is that Atlantis was located somewhere between Andalusia, Spain, and Morocco in the Strait of Gibraltar. This theory was first proposed in the 6th century by the Spanish author Juan de Mariana 
and the Dutch author Johan van Gorp, also known as Johan Goropius Beckenus. Many researchers have built on their work since then. Most recently, the German teacher Werner Wickbolt wrote a book in 2005 to support this theory. In Wickbolt's account, the War of the Atlanteans refers to the war of the sea peoples who attacked the eastern Mediterranean countries around 1200 BC. Moreover, he adds that the city of Tartessos, built in the Iron Age, may have actually been constructed at the site of the fallen city of Atlantis. A similar but less well-known theory places the lost city in the Spartel Bank, a submerged former island in the Strait of Gibraltar. This theory was largely supported by the French geologist Jacques Colina Girard, who studied the sea levels from the most recent glacial maximum of the Ice Age to the recordings in ancient Egyptian records. However, a thorough study in the Bryn Mawr Classical Review identifies discrepancies in Colina Girard's work. Black Tide Another way Plato may have come up with the legend of Atlantis is based on one of the Black Sea floods, though this phenomenon is disputed among scientists. It has been proven that there was a drastic rise in the water level in the Black Sea, which would have caused a significant change in the surrounding environments and cultures. What is clear at this point is that a melting of the ice caps after the last ice age caused the level of the Mediterranean Sea to rise and eventually also overcame the natural causeways that separated the Black Sea and the Mediterranean Sea. Based on this event, the levels in the Black Sea rose within a very short time and perhaps destroyed the legendary empire there. However, today's excavations and models assume that these events never took place. More likely, the sea level would have risen quite slowly, giving people on the coast enough time to leave their cities and metropolises. Presumably, the flood was indeed the basis for the story of the deluge, but it can be assumed that it was not the reason for Plato's story about the mysterious kingdom of Atlantis. The Bermuda Triangle One of the more obscure variants of the Atlantis sagas is the connection to the equally mysterious Bermuda Triangle. The region is known for the fact that especially in the late first and early second half of the 20th century, airplanes and entire ships are said to have disappeared from this area, while radar and magnet technology went crazy in this area. Some attribute these bizarre phenomena to the residual influences of Atlantis, which is believed to have once lain in this area of the world. The considerations are based primarily on the stories of conspiracy theorists who want to combine supposed phenomena and mysteries in order to give their own theories a better basis. In fact, there isn't even any evidence to suggest that Atlantis existed in this area, if the empire ever existed at all. Corresponding investigations have remained unsuccessful, and the mystery of the Bermuda Triangle has now been debunked in a wide variety of experiments and can today be explained primarily by magnetism and poor technology at the time of the incidents. Antarctic Atlantis? One of the latest theories is that Atlantis could be in what is now Antarctica. This is an interesting approach because hardly any part of the world has been explored as little as the Arctic. There are few possibilities for the investigation and the considerations are again based primarily on theories in which the most diverse phenomena are linked with one another. The only other clue is a map by a navigator active around 1510 who combined the explorations of that time on the map including an ice-free and populated Antarctic south of South America. Today, the map is readily explained. In short, the work was not done properly, and no other seafarer of that time noted this point on his charts. Accordingly, Atlantis is a weaker explanation for how this map came out. However, there are many interesting mysteries that make Antarctica a special place. For example, the coldest temperatures on Earth. Even trying to search for Atlantis here should be relatively impossible. The coldest temperatures in the world are regularly measured in the Antarctic, which would make the use of technology and human treasure hunters impossible. With temperatures going down to minus 98 degrees in these parts of the world, how could anything like an ancient civilization ever have arisen and survived there? The Singing Ice Still, there is a magical quality to Antarctica which is evident in its singing ice. While human ears can only detect the sound of wind over the snow in Antarctica, experts have managed to capture the singing of the ice with the help of seismographs. The singing is triggered by various movements of the ice flows. In recent years, this song has increased significantly 
which is partly due to the fact that the flows are moving much more today than was the case in previous years due to climate change. But could there be a lost city in the shifting ice? The connection between Atlantis and Antarctica did not come about by chance. Indeed, it bubbles up in the same kind of rumors that once linked Atlantis to the Bermuda Triangle. As a rule, Atlantis not only serves to explain certain phenomena in nature, but has often also acted as a connection to the visits of aliens on Earth. In 2018, 41% of Americans believe that aliens visited Earth in the ancient past, and 57% believe that Atlantis or other advanced ancient civilizations existed. With the increasing popularity of both beliefs separately, it's no wonder that the two ideas became connected somehow in popular legends. Connected Systems Under the Ice Apart from conspiracy theories, Atlantis has many interesting secrets to offer. For example, there is the mystery of the vanished lakes. Satellite images showed how one of the many ice lakes in the Arctic was once filled with water. But suddenly, and within a very short time, the water seemed to have completely disappeared, leaving only a desert of ice. Now, you think you know how that happens. A large part of Antarctica is said to be connected via an underground sea. The water collects under the ice flows and may also have a connection with the oceans. But again, our knowledge of the area is extremely limited due to the difficult nature of collecting research there. The various chambers that connect the Arctic and the sea are still one of the most important places for research today. UFO Crash In fact, there can't be a good story about Atlantis that doesn't have something to do with UFOs. What's more, this particular story has to do with a researcher looking at satellite imagery in Antarctica. A new object had become visible, likely due to the melting polar ice caps. The researcher identified the object as a craft shaped in the form of a metallic disc that is 60 feet wide and looks like it was intelligently designed. There is a strange shape, reminiscent of a triangle, that also appears, which seems to be a stark deviation from the rest of the natural landscape. Many who have examined the imagery believe that the object was an airplane or some other form of transportation for an extraterrestrial visitor. However, other experts have examined the images and claim that it looks similar to others in the area. They declared that it's by no means a sighting of an extraterrestrial form of transport, but much more a drift, which is regularly visible in Antarctica and no cause for interest. Still, a research team has not been set out to examine the object in person, leaving many people in doubt as to its true nature. So now we've told you many secrets about both Atlantis and Antarctica in this video. What do you think is the core behind the story? And will we ever be able to find a real trace of Atlantis? Thank you for watching. Click on one of the pictures and watch another exciting video. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. And if you want to never miss our videos again, click subscribe and we'll see you again soon.